Let's talk about how the last of these NFL teams got their names. Is this the last one? It's the last one. Wow. Okay. We have the NFC East. Um, any any guesses? Um, I'll start with your boys, your Cowboys. I think that one's pretty obvious. Texas is such a historically, you know, yep. all the, the, the history of ranching and, and Cowboys is it's right. still it's still strong in Texas to today. But I mean, even back in the day, huge. But um, yeah, I mean, the history of Cowboys and ranches in Texas. OK, any of the other ones you got guesses for? Um, if I had to guess on the Eagles, I would think it has to do with just the country and America and the Liberty Bell was there and the Eagle is on a lot of our coins and our dollars and is a symbol of our country would be my guess. Okay. Either of the others? Giants. I want to say Giants is just one of those, like, it's an old school team. It's one of those old school names that's like, it sounds fierce, like Giants, you know? Um, and the Redskins, I, my guess would be there was probably some sort of tribe in the DC metropolitan area at some point that they wanted to pay homage to for wiping them out and building the, <laughs> the country's capital there. <laughs> ah, we'll name our football team after them. So it's like, like the opposite of the bucks. Like the bucks were like, this dude fucked us up. So we're going to name our team after him. They're mm-hmm. like, we fucked them up, so let's let's name our yeah. team after them. The Washington Genocides just doesn't have the same ring to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a reach back to Auschwitz. <laughs> 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 okay, well let's uh let's see how you did. So for the Giants, Tim Mara originally named the I'm probably I don't even know how to say that if that's even gonna be right. I'll say Tim Mara? Mara? What do you think? M-A-R-A. I'm going to say, say Mara. Okay. Tim Mara originally named the team after the National League Baseball Giants, who were a longtime favorite in New York. At the time, baseball was the king of professional sports, so owner Tim Mara wanted the same name recognition in hopes that fans would support both clubs. By the way, the baseball Giants got their name from all the giant buildings that made up New York City. Oh, Okay. So the the Giants okay. in San Francisco used to be in New York. So they yes. wanted to kind of match that to get the same recognition. Because it was such a hot team. Right. And sport and yeah, baseball was the thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I the giant building thing, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I never I never knew that. So for the Eagles, in exchange for an entry fee of twenty five hundred dollars, the Bell Ray Group Damn was awarded the assets of the failed Yellow Jackets organization, drawing inspiration from the insignia of the centerpiece of President Franklin D. Roosevelt's New Deal, specifically the National Recovery Act's Blue Eagle. Bell and Ray named the new franchise the Philadelphia Eagles, with Bell as president and general manager, and Ray as head coach. Oh, Bell? Bell. No E, though. Okay, so I think I was kind of close. Yeah. I don't don't know what the... uh, National Recovery Act is or but it was US and Eagle related. So yeah. 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 I'll take it. I'll take the dub. Okay. So for the Cowboys, professional football was originally brought to Dallas in the form of the Dallas Texans franchise in nineteen fifty two. But when that team struggled mightily, they folded after just one season, leaving Dallas void of a professional team for their most beloved sport. Seven years later, however, the city would get its franchise once again and would take full advantage of it. In October of 1959, Dallas was awarded an NFL expansion franchise with Clint Murchison, a rich Texas oilman, the majority owner. The original name for the team was the Dallas Steers. That didn't last long, though, with general manager Tex Schramm declaring it wouldn't be a good look for a football team to be named after castrated cattle. (laughs) This is when agreed. (laughs) This is when Murchison claims a new name came to him like a bolt from the blue. The Dallas Rangers, he declared, was a name for a football team if there ever was one. And even though the Rangers name was historical, proud and tough, there was a problem with it. A local minor league baseball team was already named the Dallas Rangers. Oh, with the urging of Shram, the two agreed to change the name to avoid media confusion between the two teams. 
Finally, in March 1960, a new name had been chosen. On the phone with Schramm, Merchinson, still favoring the Rangers, reluctantly decided to go with the Dallas Cowboys as the new name. It would be the only one from thereafter, though when the Dallas Rangers baseball team rel relocated to Canada in 1965, Murchison pushed for the Rangers' name once again, but to no avail. The Cowboys had already made their mark. Wow. I mean, the Rangers does make sense, but the fact that, like, in today's sports world, if there was, like, a new NFL franchise coming in and they're like, but there's a, a minor league baseball team with that well, yeah, name, they would yeah. go, I don't care. We're, we're yeah. going to, that's going to be us. <laughs> Guess what? There's like, not anymore. Yeah. Right. Like, too bad. Wow. Okay. And last and least, the Redskins. Yeah. So, for starters, this franchise wasn't always called that way. In fact, it wasn't even always located in Washington. This team was born as the Boston Braves in 1932, but his name was called to the Boston Redskins next season. It wasn't until 1936 that they moved to the nation's capital. The team was originally named the Boston Braves because they played on Braves Field, they later changed to the Redskins in an attempt to win more fans when they moved to Fenway Park, but the city wasn't that into football at the time, so they had to relocate. Team owner George Preston Marshall reportedly changed the name to avoid confusion with the homonymous baseball team and retain Native American imagery of the team, while also trying to pay respect to coach William Henry, Lone Star Dietz, and several Indian players on the team. Notably, Dietz claimed to be a Native American, but was exposed by Indian Country Today Media Network as a white man in 2004. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. 